Hello Bunny, welcome back to another episode of Adulting with Honey. I'm your host Honey and in this podcast we react to things on the World Wide Web. So welcome if it is your first time here and before we get into the podcast, this is the regular things that we announce, announcements, <laughs> lol, it ain't that serious, but if it is your first time watching this podcast, if you're watching it on YouTube, please do not forget to hit that subscribe button, leave a comment in the comment section down below and like the video if you do. If you are listening, if you're an audio listener, please do not forget to rate the show. Okay, however way you rate the show, just make sure you do it with your chest held high. Now let's dive into the video. So we love to start off the podcast with a live update. So how am I? Guys, I have been sitting in this house and I've been asking myself the question. Is this my life right now? Honestly speaking, I just find so many moments where I'm just like, is this my life? Is this happening? I am living in an answered prayer. God has, you know, when you pray about something and that something happens and you can vividly remember praying about that something, this is literally my life right now. I prayed, I prayed for this life and I am living it. So... That's the life update. <laughs> I am living a life I prayed for. I am literally living in something I used to tell myself I do not see this happening ever. I don't know if I should share with you guys, but let's just say I think the hint I'm gonna be giving is long distance relationship where 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 <laughs> you guys are yeah that's the life update i think that has too much tmi i do not want to be tmi on this podcast and that's why i've been using this layout but that has a little bit tmi so <laughs> like the video but let's head into the first segment of our podcast so today's uh, episode is going to be titled around dating you know when you're getting to know someone those first stages of dating that's what this podcast is going to be centered about so today's question of the video which i highly 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 ask you guys to please take part in the question answer the question as well please will you i would appreciate that I'll be answering the question at the end of my uh, my reaction to other people's responses. So stay tuned for that coming up. Now, the question is, single people, what is it like in the dating scene nowadays? As y'all know, I am in a relationship. I've been in a five years, four years. You know the relationship has been going on for a while when you can't remember how long you've been in the relationship. I think it's four years going on to five years. <laughs> Brain. Anyways, the first person responded, people are flaky as fuck. They aren't trying to put in effort. They are not willing to be honest and have honest conversations. <laughs> Guys, how do you expect to be in a normal relationship or how do you expect to get to know someone you are dating if you are not trying to be honest with them? If you're not trying to have conversations, if you're not putting effort. Yeah, I can understand. Somebody actually responded to this and said, the flakiness is awful and it's on all sides. If I tell you I'm going to be somewhere, I'm going to be there at a specific time. I'm going to move heaven and hell to get there at the time, bro. I hate people that you can't rely on, that you make plans and then they show up 340 minutes late. Like, what the F is that about? 
that's disrespectful of my time as well that is so true that that is we are definitely disrespect, disrespecting my time <laughs> uh, i would rather somebody told me straight up they are not um, feeling me instead of just ghosting you it also kills any chances of being friends honestly guys what's up with the ghosting you know the same way that you approached me when you hey when you were trying to go on a date with me and we managed to go on a date that same guts that you had to approach me now is the same guts that you need to have when you are breaking up with me or when you feel like this relationship is not working out when you feel like this is not getting to the level you wanted to get to when you feel like we're not compatible which these things are things that happen so i do not understand when somebody says i ghosted you because i didn't know how to tell you about it so you guys know most my experience about getting ghosted i shared a video a very long time ago i don't know if it is still alive on this youtube channel or if i deleted it but i shared a video about my story on how i got ghosted i think i deleted it i don't know why i deleted it but if it still exists you can go check it out and story <laughs> we don't yeah story time quickly i'm gonna throw in my story here not the story of how i got ghosted but the aftermath so um let's say about maybe a year or two after getting ghosted so i think i got ghosted in was it 2020 and then we're in 2024 now so three years later oh my word three years later i ran into this person at a particular place and for some weird reason this person felt like now is the time that they need to approach me and you know apologize for their actions and how they behaved that time like i am serious this is not i'm not even making this up but this person felt like they needed to clear the air i don't even know clearing what a but i guess it was necessary because every time i saw this person i would act like i don't know them i would act like they do not exist i would act like i can't see them <laughs> that is petty of me that was me taking petty to another level but um long story short this person wanted to clear the air apologize or whatever and uh, so they were there talking and i don't know why i even asked or why i needed to know but i asked him okay so why did you ghost me like what was what was your reason not that i wanted to get back with him or anything but i don't even know why i asked him though but i asked him and his reason was like i didn't know how to talk to you like i i was too afraid of you i'm like what do you mean you were afraid of me like what reasoning is that huh what do you mean you were afraid of me so were you not afraid of me when you approached me in the first place because i didn't approach you you approached me were you not afraid of me then so anyways i've experienced this so i'm like i'm just like yo stop ghosting people the same energy that you had to ghost me i mean that you had to approach me and ask me to date you be your girlfriend wara wara it's the same energy that i need you to have when you want to ghost me it's just that simple guys it's not that hard if you could approach the person and ask them to go out on a date with you it shouldn't be that hard to approach them and tell them unfortunately it's not working out anyways let's read another response single people what is it like being in the dating scene nowadays somebody else responded saying everyone is always looking for something better no one seems to be able to hold a conversation and my god it's nearly impossible to get someone to meet you in person i need to break this one down into two parts because this one about everyone is always looking for something better i'm gonna quote something that somebody recently said to me and we're just having a conversation with someone and they were like you know what sometimes the person that you are having right now or the person that you are dating right now is actually 
the perfect, the most right person for you. But you are always looking to see, like, thinking that, that the grass is greener on the other side. In fact, the grass is not always greener on the other side. So let's stop, you know, always thinking that um, the grass is greener on the other side. Because most of the time or half of the time, the grass is going to be greener in the beginning of any relationship or you getting to know someone or you dating someone. The grass is going to be greener because why? The person is always going to be bringing their best foot forward. So the grass is not always greener on the other side. It's just that people can be putting up a facade. So sometimes evaluate what you are in, the relationship that you are having before you start thinking the grass is greener on the other side. That's the first part that I wanted to break down. And then the other one is, oh my God, it's nearly impossible to get someone to meet you in person. <gasps> yeah, it shouldn't be that hard if you are looking for a relationship. Now that I think about it, if you're looking for a relationship, if you're looking for love, it should be a priority most me. I'm, like, why wouldn't it be a priority? Why wouldn't you put effort in that? Because I just don't see myself... If I was dating, I wouldn't see myself like I'm talking to someone. I don't know, maybe I met them on... Where do people go for dating nowadays? A dating app or Instagram or wherever. And I'm talking to someone and I have not met them yet. In a month, two months. That is way too long. I feel like minimum it should be like um two weeks of getting to know each other. Even three maybe at most before we go out on a date. But that date needs to happen. Single people, what is it like being single in this dating scene nowadays? Someone else responded, it's like a waste of land of wannabe influencers. I just want a nice person who I enjoy spending time with doing the simple things. Then if things go well, we can do more exciting and expensive things. A land filled with wannabe influencers. I'm not sure about the wannabe influencers. What people are you dating and where are you meeting them? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Is it the girls that want to take a picture of their meal? With, I mean, it's just a picture of a meal. It's just that quick. <laughs> so maybe you're just meeting the wrong people. Uh, let's see some responses to that one. So someone said, here's some advice that I got that I found super helpful in my experience. Target your profile to people you actually want to date. Most guys make a profile that tries to make them uh, as hot as possible because that's what everything online tells them is the best way to get tons of matches. But the thing is doing that is just catering to the girls that are mostly interested in how hot a guy is. And let's face it, 90% of guys aren't going to have any success with this type of girl no matter how good of a profile they make. That is so true. That is so true. If you are making your dating app to cater to people that have nothing that you are interested in, people that will be attracted to the image that you are painting that is not actually necessarily you, then you are basically painting a picture or you are attracting the wrong audience. Like, I can't be here, I'm looking for bananas, but I'm talking about apples. Like, I'm going to be getting bananas, I won't be getting apples. Makes sense. Let's continue reading. Instead, you should target your profile towards the kind of girls that you are actually interested in dating. These girls are more interested in just finding a nice guy that they can be comfortable around and have a good time with. And honestly, don't care that much about your looks. They want to see pictures of you having fun, doing a hobby to show that you are a fun person. Maybe show a silly picture of you to show off your sense of humor. Make sure to have at least one group picture to show that other people actually like being around you. And most importantly, put some effort into your bio and be open about yourself and what you want. This advice goes both ways too. When swiping on girls, actually take the time to go into their profile and read their bios. Yes, you'll probably swipe less. You'll probably swipe on less people that way and maybe even get less matches. But the matches you get will be much higher quality and actually might lead to something real. 
and most importantly put effort into the conversations when you get a match you are excited about don't just go through the motions if you followed the last piece of advice hopefully there's something in her profile you were interested in so ask her about it put yourself out of out on a limb and be willing to take risk message back right away even if you think it will make you look desperate ask her some deeper questions right away so many girls are just like you guys and looking for an authentic person to open up to so show them you are willing to try to be that person and they might open up to you in return oh my goodness this was probably the best advice that i could have given you i wouldn't have said it this way but this person said it so well so um i think we are gonna leave that one there because i don't see how i can top that answer so um let me answer um what is it like in the dating streets um guys anu i have not been in the dating streets like i said for five four five years so i do not know what it is like being in the dating streets right now in 2024 however when i was in the dating streets <laughs> yo i think for me my biggest struggle with dating used to be commitment um and people sticking to their word so basically if you say you're gonna do something and then you don't do it ah, that was the most annoying thing and that was my red flag number one if you say we are gonna do something at what time and you do not communicate especially if we planned to go somewhere together um say it's a monday right and we plan to go somewhere five o'clock on the friday come around friday four o'clock if we had not had this discussion of when are we meeting where are we meeting i am sorry but i am most likely not going to be showing up that was just me when i was dating it was just so hard to find people that will say they'll do something and actually stick to their word so that was my greatest challenge or struggle with when it came to dating um and then the other thing was honesty like just being honest yo guys they will lie about the smallest things small little white lies i oh, my goodness i could not i could not stand small little white lies just be honest and sometimes they do it apparently uh, uh, because they are afraid to hurt your emotions how do you know you're gonna hurt my emotions if you don't try just be honest i'd rather you hurt my feelings with the honest than you hurting my feelings with a lie that's just my take on that but yeah that was my experience with dating comment down below what was your experience with dating with or oh, when you were dating and if you are in the dating scene right now what is your experience being in this dating sense i'm glad i'm out of them because you they seem rough i literally went through this i tried to look for somebody that's excited or enjoying the dating scene and i cannot find a single person enjoying the dating scene so we are going to move into the next segment of the podcast which is am i the a-hole so if you are new and you're not aware here is the the ranking system for the stories i'll read a story and then i'll ring, rank it eh, ring i'll read a story and then i will rank it based on this list here the reasoning for these rankings have nothing to do with this one is better than the other or anything like that it's basically just how i feel about the story so number one is did i just read my own confession that means i have experienced the same thing i've done the same thing or something like that has happened to me right i can relate to it that's what that one means the second one is i cannot relate is this is this is this real <laughs> that means it 
I mean, it's something that's happening, I guess, but it's just, I can't relate. I can't picture myself in that scene that has never happened to me. And wow, basically. Then the last ranking system is you just confessed to a crime. And I think we need to call the popo. They're calling the popo on you. <laughs> so that's when the story is so outrageous that yeah it needs to we need the popo in here there's somebody confessing to a crime we got it okay so let's go into the story so the story is am, am i the a-hole not accepting dead dating my aunt after mom died just before before I read the story, because I am a little bit concerned about the opinion I'm going to have. And so I feel like I need to explain the opinion I'm going to have before we get into the story. Because I, for a fact, know I'm going to have a different reaction than most people. And this is why. So... I am a Herero Han, an African girl from Namibia, from the tribe of a Herero. And unfortunately, in my tribe, we, this is something we practice. And before I go into that, if you are a Herero, please feel free to correct me if I'm saying something that is not right. Feel free to share your opinions. This is just my opinion and my understanding of the practice but i am open to learning and let's not attack each other in the comment section please let's be respectful fight the opinion not the person now with that being said i am a herero and in my tribe um so things are changing right now the world is becoming more modern and people are having more choices of will i don't know if that made sense but so um back in the day i'm gonna give you both scenarios don't worry back in the day people a woman actually didn't have the choice um they just had to do it but now today women actually have the choice to choose to accept or decline so in my tribe if um a husband loses his wife and the wife has a younger sister that is not married, the husband could actually, what they call is, I don't know if I can say inherit. I don't know if that is the correct term, but um, basically the husband can get remarried or can get, they don't have a whole formal wedding or whatever, but the husband can actually, for lack of a better word, inherit his wife's sister as his now new wife has this happened in my family yes has this happened to people that are really close to me yes i have seen this happen and in my experience unfortunately the woman that was given the option to get married to her sister's um husband after their sister died declined i used so many sisters and her sisters and so many of those words i hope this was clear but yeah this has happened very closely in my family as my photo frame falls so hold up wait a minute we need to fix that um that that that's my take and maybe if i had <laughs> a unpopular opinion but would I practice this if I had the opportunity? And my answer is yes. If I was married and I happened to die before my husband and I have a sister that is single, that is willing to get married to my husband when I'm no longer there. <laughs> Please, by all means, what do you mean? By all means, it must happen. Because what? Why wouldn't I want that? I would definitely want that. But let's read the story. So 
Am I the a-hole not accepting dead dating my aunt after mom died? My mom passed away last year, so now it's just me. 15, my sister 19, brother 14, and dad 43. My parents got together when they were in school and have stayed together all their life. They were amazing parents and basically had the perfect love life before mom got sick. I always wanted to find a love like them. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But one thing I have came to learn is that even the most perfect relationships that we see um, on social media, around us, people close to us, their relationships are not that perfect. Relationships can sometimes be a lot of work and people have things in their closet so wishing that you had a similar relationship to someone else it's mm. sometimes <laughs> what you will be wishing is not necessarily what you'll be wanting because we never really know what is happening in people's relationships as much as we think we do but yeah honey you are projecting <laughs> i'm projecting here so let's just keep reading I always wanted to find a love like them, just the one person I would be with all my life. I was always really close with her and miss her so much. Dad said the same and promised her that he'd never love anyone else like he loved her. Key what? He'd never love anyone else like he loved her. And that is so true. His love with whoever, being your aunt, being anyone else that he comes and finds um along the way will never be the same as the love that he had for your mother no love is ever gonna be the same whether it was good whether it was bad you will never find the same love more than once it's just not possible you can never love two different people the same way so keyword he will never love anyone of the same way he loved your mom but it doesn't mean he will never love anyone else moving on However, Dad came to us last week and talked to us saying he wanted to get with our aunt. She's been helping us since mom died. We have spent a lot of time with her and our cousins. Apparently, Dad and her fell in love now and want to be together. Obviously, I was furious and told him that he couldn't and that he was betraying mom. My brother agreed with me, but our sister thinks it's okay somehow and tried to get us to listen to Dad's betrayal. Yo! Betrayal, I feel like those are, you are having very strong feelings about this. Dad promised mom that he wouldn't get with someone else. I uh, know you are saying two different things now. You said he, he promised that he wouldn't get with someone else or that he wouldn't fall in love with anyone else the same way he was in love with Hay. Also, would... Guys, comment down below. Would you want your partner to promise you to never fall in love again? after you die would you want your partner not to find love again if you happen to die before them i don't know i think i'd want my partner to fall in love again and have a beautiful love story all over again if i happen to die before them so um anyway let's continue reading dad promised mom that he wouldn't get with someone else if it was someone new he found then maybe i could forgive him but it's mom's sister Mom would never accept it. I would never date my sister's partner. It's disgusting. He's just betraying her and in a horrible way. And like, what about our cousins? Are they going to be our siblings now? It's all so weird and wrong. <laughs> this part, sorry, I know I'm laughing. I'm not supposed to be laughing at this. But I'm laughing at this because, unfortunately, for a girl like me that came from um, an extended family. I've never lived in a house where it was just me and my mom or me and my siblings and my mom. Like, mm -mm. everywhere I've lived, if it was not in the hostel, it was my mom and some of my cousins, my mom and some of my other sisters that are my, okay, my cousins, English. Um, so it's, it's, it's either my mom, my, my mom's sisters, their kids, my uncles and their kids, my grandparents, it was never just, I've never lived in a household where it was just me and my mom and my sisters. That has never happened. That's why I'm laughing at that. Because I honestly find it so hard to even sometimes refer to my cousins as my 
cousins because it just feels like they are my siblings and I don't know how to love them any differently from my own siblings. The same love I give to my cousin is that my cousin is we will probably be the same love I'll be giving to my own sister. So it's just it, it's it's weird for me because I just do not know that world where it's just me and my mom and my sisters. It has always been me, my cousins, my mom, my sisters, my aunts, my uncles. So, eh, yeah, I can't relate. Moving on. Dad tried to talk to me about it, but he won't really listen and thinks it's fine. If he really loved mom, he would never do this. I told him he's not my dad anymore if he cares more about sex than mom and just refused to talk to him anymore. Oh my word. I want nothing to do with him and I don't care if it hurts him. He deserves it. Ah, shame. This one hurts. This sucks. This really sucks. Like, I, I think I understand both sides. I get your frustration a little, not that much. But I also understand where your dad is coming from and your aunt as well. There's this thing called trauma bonding. And it can be so real. Sometimes you can fall in love with people that are going through the same thing as you. Your aunt has known your mom longer than anyone has ever known her in this case. Like longer than your, uh, uh, longer than your father, longer than yourself. So she definitely also is grieving someone that she cared for and loved for a really long time. And... Having someone to share that trauma with now, in this case, being your dad, can really be bonding for the both of them. And yes, maybe they need to go for therapy regarding their trauma bonding, but um, this is possible um, to be a real um, connection and to actually grow into something nice and big. And yeah, it could be a good thing. Let's continue reading. reading. I think it's discussing what he's doing. I don't understand how he can just not care about mom anymore. She would hate this if she knew about it. But my sister keeps trying to tell me I am being unfair and selfish and to give dad and aunt a chance on this. But he has made mom a promise and there's no way breaking it with her sister is right. She edited it kind of like an update and she said, dad is allowed to date again. While I probably wouldn't be super happy, I would let him date someone new, but dating mom's sister is wrong. Am I the a-hole? I do not think you are an a-hole. I understand that you are hurt and you are coming from a place of hurt. So I do not think you are an a-hole. No, you are not an a-hole. But like I said, um... These people both went through something that was um, painful to both of them and maybe even traumatic. So they kind of had someone that they could share this experience with that understood their grief and they bonded. And who's to say that their love is not real? Honestly speaking, I personally would rather... My aunt come sleep in my mother's bed with my dad instead of a stranger that I know nothing about. That's just me. So let's see what other people have to say. Oh, so somebody responded, Oh, kiddo, I'm so sorry you lost your mom. That is life altering and so very much to deal with. It's 100% okay for you to feel whatever you are feeling and of course, you will have strong emotions about this. You are absolutely not the a-hole. However, nobody else in this situation is either. I agree. Your father is also dealing with immense grief and your aunt is dealing with immense grief, like I said. Sometimes that makes us cling to the familiar. That is so true. For your dad, your aunt may feel like that. Nobody will replace your mom for you or your dad. But it's still okay not to be happy with this. I would encourage you to ask your dad to attend therapy with you. 
then you can discuss this with a professional who can help you both talk through what's going on no matter what happens be gentle with yourself and your family and allow your family to heal as well yeah i agree we agree i agree i agree i agree with everything that person said somebody else responded saying not the a-hole i'm an adult and i'd be absolutely ho um, hoping met if my dad told me he was going to date my mom's sister so um we found somebody else that think that that would also be met that can relate with op op meaning the original poster he's allowed he's allowed to move on that's fair but it's been a year and it and it's still likely very raw for you and with an aunt yeah sorry i can't say i would be okay with that either op actually responded to this and they said thank you i just don't get how people think choosing a sibling isn't wrong doesn't get how we think it's <laughs> it's not wrong uh, some somebody responded to this saying so i think that's what a lot of post above are saying he didn't necessarily choose her it sounds like it just happened while they were both trying to figure out how to live without her all those feelings you've had about how it feels wrong or how will they explain it to people i promise you they thought of it too this likely wasn't a decision they made lightly that is so true now i would be worried that he's moving on too soon i would be worried that their bond is born from trauma and need and not of love i would be worried that if things went wrong between them family events will be awkward all of which should be dealt with by the adults in your family through individual and family counseling so that you and your siblings have the best results you have the right to demand that from him that he makes sure he uses all the tools available to him to ensure he's making good choices especially while you are living in the house but that's kind of the most you can ask for and i promise you one year one decade and or no and you are probably going to dislike your father's new partner it's human nature my father waited the appropriate amount of time and then chose some chose someone so different from my mom. It was so offensive to me. How could you even like mom if this is who you wanted now? Dude couldn't even have won if he brought home my mom's clone, which is kind of what your dad did, but I certainly don't like this model. Oh, and mine is racist, so my dad liking racist was a lot of was a lot to unpack for me on top of the dating your aunt is a known quantity at least what i'm saying is i get it it sucks but i'm 90 percent sure that him getting a new partner was always going to suck because it's not your mom it's a replacement for your dad but not you but in the grand scheme of things choosing a woman you know and love and trust and who loved your mom longer than anyone else and who will most likely uphold her memory and care for your kids like your own well well your aunt isn't a terrible choice except for all that stuff i mentioned above like it being too soon or um, a trauma bond or the fallout from a breakup but that's just for them to figure out with professionals i agree i agree i agree with everything that this person said let's read another response someone else said trauma bonding or grief bonding is a powerful thing i do hope both the aunt and the dead are seeking grief counseling so they are approaching this with a clear mind as uh, possible given um, circumstances true 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 um okay let's read one more response someone said not going to call you an a-hole because you are a grieving kid but give dead and aunt a break and then they are quoting had the perfect love life they are respond probably not perfect no marriage is <laughs> um miss her so much dad said the same and promised her that he'd never love anyone else like he loved her they respond to that saying trust me he doesn't love your aunt the same way he loved your mom just like i said he can love her but 
not in the same way that is so true and um, they also responded to i don't understand how he can just not care about mom anymore and they responded to that saying it's not a matter of not caring about your mom but she is gone try to give dad and aunt a break and let them figure it out don't really know the state of your parents marriage you only know what they showed you it most likely wasn't as perfect as you think Death tends to make us remember someone as their best, forgetting their flaws. You are grieving. You are all grieving. Be gentle with yourself and each other. That is so true. There is no better way to summarize this. How do I rate this? I think I'm going to rate this as... Did I just read my own confession? definitely wouldn't react the same way or have the same sentiments as her but this is something that has happened in my family before something i've experienced something i am very familiar with so i'm gonna read it with did i just read my own confession now let's move on to the next segment this one is confession of the week and it reads I am only dating her so that I can hurt her. What the heck? What, are, what, what is happening here? Several months ago, one of my friends asked me if I liked her and if I was interested on going on a date with her. We've been friends for a long time and I like her a lot as a friend, but I don't really see her that way. So I respectfully told him that I wasn't interested. She started crying a little and kept asking why. It was a really awkward situation because she's one of my best friends and I didn't want to hurt her, but she kept asking so I told her. So I told her that she had slept around a lot, which is a little bit of a turn off. Yeah. No offense to girls who sleep around, it's just nothing. It's just not something I find attractive. Respect you, bro. Respect you. She was upset. But I told her about a guy who I knew was into her and said that I could hook them up, which seems to make her a little bit happier. Anyway, I gave her a hug and a kiss and then I took her home. A kiss way. You gave her a kiss way. She obviously told her friends about it because two or three days later, one of her friends wrote a status on Facebook condemning me and men in general for slut shaming and misogamy misogamy yeah that what she didn't mention me by name but everyone knew that she was talking about me how did everyone know that she was talking about you if she didn't mention you by name especially if it is on facebook firstly i didn't slut shame my friend one uh my friend i simply said that promiscuity English hey. is a bit of a turn off for me i am not allowed to be attracted to certain things i am not allowed to judge a woman based on her behavior that's ridiculous also i am a miso misogynist guys let's google how to say this word because at this point uh, i do not have data never mind that's ridiculous that's ridiculous i am i am a misogynist what bullshit it really annoyed me because it got like 120 likes those are too little it was all women who liked it it was essentially just women complaining and circle checking at my expense even though i did nothing wrong the whole thing left a bad taste in my mouth so i decided that i was going to get back at her somehow i had met her a few times before but i didn't know her very well Ultimately, I decided that the best way to get back at her was to make her care for me and then hurt her in the same way. What the heck? This actually makes you worse than her going to chat about her bad experience with the men, with her friends, and then the friends going to make an anonymous post that nobody knew was about you. Yeah. We have a lot of the same friends, so it's not uncommon for us to see each other. I started flirting with her occasionally, then I got her number, and then we started dating. After that, we started a relationship, and we've been together for four months or so now. 
she is not actually as much of a bitch as I thought she was going to be. I've done the thing where we where you act like the perfect guy for long periods and then pull back for a week or so and she always comes running. That combined with how she reacts when she's around me confirms that she's now really into me. Since we are sort of in the honeymoon phase, it's about time where I should be looking to head her in some way. But I still haven't decided how yet. Yo, I am not sure if I should cheat or if I should cheat on her or just leave. Just leave. Just leave. What do you mean? What is wrong with you? I am not going to throw it in her face or anything like that because I don't really need or want her to know that I am getting back at her. I am doing this for me. What is... Hey, my goodness, I am so angry. Wow. I know it may seem a little extreme. A little extreme. This is outrageous it's not a little extreme it's outrageous but i didn't even know her and she tried and she tried to push to push nonsense about me being a misogynist to all of our friends so i think it's completely justified no it's not justified then he's writing no regrets what is going on in people and their minds head is you how little of an how big maybe of an ego do you have to be head by something that had nothing to do with you maybe it has something to do with you but it didn't even mention your name that is your own how insecure are you this was not about you at all and you made it about you so much that you had somebody else's emotions and walked into it wow and she's not even the one that went and wrote the story. It would be different if she was the one that went and wrote the story. It was her friends that wrote the story. What are you talking about? What do you mean? Why should she renew this? This this is just ridiculous. Let's see what somebody said. Why am I so angry? <laughs> my blood is boiling. Why is my blood blow blowing? Why is my blood yo? tongue twister why is my blood boiling so much wow let's respond let's read one response um this one said seems like you are taking it a bit too far she was upset so she gossiped to her girlfriends and exaggerated a bit you on the other hand are purposely trying to do her emotional damage through i don't know men just seems like you are crossing a line to me anyway Let's read the second response. The second response said, What if she told her friends literally what for what what you said and her friends is and her friend is the one who decided who decided you were a misogynist? What if she defended you? She she has a crush on you after all. Is she not allowed to seek solace in her friends after you rejected her? Even if you did it nicely, chances are she still needed to talk about it with someone because she was sad. Exactly. You just, you just wanted to reject someone and expect them to go sit at home quiet and never share their story with anyone else or their feelings and emotions with anyone else. Was that your actual expectation? There's no way. You could be executing this whole disgusting plan on the wrong person with no regrets. Even if her friends has this opinion of you, I don't think she deserves to be targeted of this weird revenge you have hashed. You are acting like a narcissist, overreacting to your insecurities and being petulant and unnecessary, unnecessarily cruel. The most part about this is how satisfied you sound with yourself for this ridiculously unimaginative plot all based on speculation and rumors grow up try not to be such a self-important as whole next time <laughs> this sounded like an andy wrote this one <laughs> but honestly speaking i feel like you are putting in way too much effort into this plot ne? and this whole thing had literally nothing to do with you at all and this is why me uh, guys why do you guys date people when you are not matured 
like dating takes a lot of maturity and mental growth ne? so if you don't have the mental growth capacity ne? and maturity level that it takes to be dating just do not date if you don't know how to deal with your emotions if you don't know how to express your emotions if you don't know how to deal with disappointment which is most likely going to happen when you are dating you are not ready to date first work on those things before you start dating because this is these are the people that end up leaving people in such situations it's because of these people that people are scared to put themselves out there and fall in love and find love because they're afraid somebody is gonna hurt them because they have been hurt by too many people like this it's because of such people really i don't think giving her a reason to be to label you as a jerk will work out in your favor it's true that's not revenge that's validating her original opinion of you this this is so true and actually <laughs> Oh, the original poster actually responded to this comment and they said, yeah, that's why I don't think that cheating on her would be a good idea because in that scenario, everyone would see, me, would see me as an asshole. However, if I broke up with her and then got with another girl or something like that, then if she complained about me being a jerk, I could just say that I loved her very much, but I just fell for another girl but i never cheated on her which makes it seem like i'm just a misunderstood good guy plenty of people fall for someone else when they are in a relationship i think that's a better approach no none of these approaches oh my goodness the fact that this person actually think that they can be a good person after all of this is just mind blowing like how do you think doing this how do you think there's any way that you can be a good person from this like how there's nothing that you can do there's no way that you can break up with her that's actually gonna make you a good person you are not clearly you just showed the rest of the world your true colors what anyways how do i read this story i mean they clearly didn't commit a crime i can't relate to I, I mean i've never really experienced this because i've never done anything like that to someone would never do that to someone um do i think someone has done this to me i don't know and i would never know but i think i'm gonna rate this one as i cannot relate this is definitely unrelatable that's how we are gonna read this one we are now going to get into the last segment of the podcast and this segment is called unpopular opinion unfortunately with unpopular opinion this is our chance to teach ourselves that sometimes you just do not have to react to everything yeah so this is someone's unpopular opinion please it's not my opinion i have my own opinions this is not my opinion but it's someone's unpopular opinion and i just want to put it out there so this person's unpopular opinion is dating apps didn't ruin dating influencers did. Let's read what they have to say. <clears throat> dating apps were completely fine back in the late 2000s, 2018-ish roughly. Conversations flowed better, less generic profiles, and people were much more open to meeting without chatting for several weeks first. there were of course catfishes out there but the atmosphere was less tense and it certainly wasn't perfect but we definitely weren't in the trenches now comes the rise of influencers people with little to no relationship experiences giving advice to others how many dating influencers are in relationships most of them are perpetually single and above average in the looks department they all spew the same nonsense and we have entered into an era of endless opinions about the most mundane topics such as drinks or bowling, being acceptable for a first date or when should you split the bill. Influencers are the main people who advise others on what to put on their profiles. If a video gets a high number of views, guess what? All those individuals now have the same profile because we are told it works. I seen a TikTok 
earlier where an influencer was telling women if a man doesn't offer his hoodie on the first date he's not really interested why would i give you my hoodie on the first date i barely know you it's so ridiculous how these types of people are now the leaders of the dating community influencers killed critical thinking and basic social etiquette they told you there is no need to compromise when a healthy relationship requires compromising edit by dating influencers i mean podcasters dating coaches or people who have a large following and decide to share advice on how to engage or fill out profiles in that was somebody's unpopular opinion and with that unpopular opinion we have come to the end of this video if you enjoyed it i hope you gave it a huge thumbs up and you left a comment in the comment section down below like i said i really appreciate you guys for answering the questions and voicing your opinions in the comment section down below let's use this as a platform to uh, engage and learn with each other judge the opinion and not the person with that being said, please do not forget to like, subscribe, and comment. It is free of charge, but it means the world to me because that's a YouTube way of promoting our videos to more people. And if you are listening on a streaming platform, that is your way of ranking our podcast a little bit higher in the algorithm. So um, rate the podcast and however way you rate it, make sure you rate it with your chest held high. With that being said, Ray.